Hey guys, my name is Marie Lebrana. Um, for those of you that don't know me, I'm a strength and conditioning coach and an endorsed ATG coach. Although I love and played many sports, uh, soccer was a sport that allowed me to play competitively into adulthood. Today, I'll be analyzing the use of ATG for soccer players. Soccer is a unique sport in the demands it requires from its athletes. You need to be fast, but able to run long distances, explosive, but for 90 minutes, agile, but also able to do it with the ball at your feet. You need muscle mass to protect from the contact, but being on the leaner side is beneficial. It is one of the few sports that requires all aspects of being an athlete. The elite players are fast, agile, jump high, cut on a dime, technically skilled, can cover nine to 12 kilometers in 90 minutes, strong, mentally sharp, and can put their body into a tackle. How do you become good at so many things? You'd have to train like four to six hours a day. Well, no, but let's first take a look at how team trainings prepare players for the match. If you think of what coaches often do in training sessions, and as you saw in the previous slide, you're in training sessions for a long time during the week. Um, coaches want to put together, you know, a, a technical, a tactical, and a possessive oriented training session. So you'll know exactly the things that you get more of in training sessions versus matches. Also think about how in practices, in the grids and the drills, you have about six to 12 players versus about 22 well, exactly 22 on a soccer field. So you have the increased time with the ball, you have increased tackles because there's less space between players, you have increased total distance over five practices versus the one match, and increased high acceleration and decelerations because of the smaller spaces in the grids and drills. That's the same reason why there are fewer high intensity runs, sprints, and jumps and headers. One thing not spoken about is how each of the things required to be a good soccer player, each skill trained in training sessions and matches is needing one common thing, and that's strength. Yet the most practiced skill outside of training sessions at any level is technical drills and endurance running, not strength. Nasus and Rebello did a study with highly trained soccer players and found that combination training and strength um, uh, traditional resistance exercises, which is basically strengthening a muscle group um, and combination training is strength and power training, all helped increase sprint times, vertical jumps, soccer specific skills, um, counter movement jumps, agility, and second half efficiency. Technical training and endurance running alone will only improve a couple of these skills versus all of them. The greatest benefit of combination or TRE training is the neural adaptation that impacts all soccer related skills. So striking power, second half efficiency, neural adaptation and technical skills all increase while fatigue decreases. Less fatigue means greater neural control, which results in greater technical skill late in the game. That's not going to be um, provided to you from running long distances. Combination and TRE training also improves striking, long ball passing, and heading power. ATG training is turning the weak into freaks. It can be strength, power, hypertrophy, and rehab training. Strength is the ability to overcome resistance, while power is strength done quickly. Hypertrophy is adding muscle mass to your frame, and rehab is progressing you from a movement that you can't do or something with assistance to being able to do it really well, or going from doing it with pain to doing it with no pain. Ben Patrick has used the ATG system for over 10 years. He's increased his vertical uh, from 19 to 42 inches, gone from a 10 second 40 or even slower, as he says, to sprinting over 21 miles per hour. Walking downstairs was extremely painful, and now he's able to jump off of one story roofs onto concrete, not advised, with no pain. These are two examples of training programs. Um, the one on the right is basically this option A, but including some ATG movements to round out the training day. Both include glute, quad, hamstring, core, and upper body training. The most glaring difference between the two is that the ATG additions include lower leg training. This is the toes, feet, ankles, calves, and anterior tibialis. This is important because we are adding strength and power above our lower leg, and we need the lower leg to be able to keep up to not cause any injury. And at best case scenario, it's just leaving 
uh, more capability, more speed, more agility on the table that's not tapped into. So um, the lower leg training is done by adding the sled push pull and the Patrick step up. The hip flexors, which are often a weak link in soccer players, is specifically trained with the cable hip flexor pull or also called the uh, reverse squat. The difference between the RDL with the pause at the bottom and the kickstand RDL, both useful at certain times in the training program. Um, the reason this one includes the kickstand and an ATG style RDL, which is complete straight leg knee behind the ankle, is because there are often discrepancies between length and strength between sides, and those discrepancies increase your risk of injury. The dip is meant to um, focus on shoulder range of motion because lack of shoulder extension leads to a shorter stride, which creates a more posteriorly dominant run. And because it is a sport where sprinting is not the main part of the sport, potentially having a posteriorly dominant run can increase your risk of hamstring injury and hamstring injuries are all, already extremely common in, in soccer players. Finally, the ATG split squat is taking the benefits that the dumbbell split squat provides, but maximizing hip flexor length and strength, as well as VMO and glute strength and activation. It also includes big toe extension and ankle mobility. So it's the most bang for your buck exercise because we are really working all aspects from the ground to really total body, but definitely all the way up to your hips. Strength and power training plus speed and uh, plyo training is the best combination for the complicated soccer athlete. So why does ATG skip speed and plyo training? Well, it doesn't. It's just that sports are now almost all year round sports and your sport provides speed and plyo training within it. But if and when you are in the off season, we incorporate plyo and speed training at least one time a week each. I incorporate ATG training in all of my programs. It is not a end all be all, but it can be, and it can make you a great athlete. Um, but it can also just be a supplemental program to your current training methods, or it can be used as a method of picking and choosing exercises to eradicate your weaknesses. It is a measurable system that provides specific progressions to elite standards. Each standard is based on your body weight and percentages are taken from what elite athletes are capable of doing in their sports. For example, an elite sprinter or all elite sprinters have phenomenally strong hip flexors and hamstrings. So they're easily capable of performing a Nordic curl, even if they've never trained it. Their hip flexors are strong for their body and are capable of lifting 50% of their body weight. ATG has a safe, progressive, and specific method in helping you achieve each standard you need and becoming a bulletproof elite athlete. ATG is not about exclusive training just at ATG. It's inclusive and focused on leveling up your weaknesses. I have 20 plus years of playing experience, 10 plus years of coaching experience, and I train soccer players to become resilient athletes. As an ATG endorsed coach, I use ATG principles in each of my training programs. If you'd like to reach out to me, um, Instagram's the best way, and it's Marie Lebrano, 91. Thanks for your time.